You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 231 with Matt Morris. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What is going on, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. And man, we are paying it forward today with Matt Morris. He has got one hell of a story. He has had several significant emotional events in his life, and now he's ready to talk about it. And before we get into today's conversation, I want to share with you guys specifically. I've already shared this in the Facebook group. And if you're not in the Facebook group, men, make sure you get in the Facebook group because we have so many amazing things coming up. But specifically for you, I am signing on 20 men into a beta group. I've already got some coming on board. So it's going to go quick. And what I've done is I've started a membership site. And it is the Abundance and Prosperity Mastery Group where we are going to be learning together and growing together in a mastermind. And there is already so much amazing information, so much amazing content in this mastermind, in the Abundance and Prosperity Mastery group. Now, this group, this member site is not going to be on Facebook. So for those of you who have been contacting me and say, hey, what kind of content do you have that's not on Facebook? Well, Much of my Facebook Live videos actually post onto YouTube at Abundance and Prosperity Mastery or Men of Abundance. You can search either one of those on YouTube. But people have been asking me, guys and women have actually been asking me, do I coach in living a life of abundance? And of course, I don't coach ladies. Ladies, I apologize for that. I'm only speaking to the men. But listen, you have men in your life who are going to greatly improve their relationship with you. They're going to improve their relationship with their kids and their co-workers and their subordinates if they're business owners, uh, their supervisors. Their health is going to get better because we are going to be talking about subjects about improving your life and, and creating an abundant and prosperous life in family, faith, finances, and fitness. I'm not going to be the only one in there talking. I'm going to be bringing in experts as well, setting up various courses, and we're going to be able to communicate in the member's site. So guys, if this interests you, and ladies, if you know any men that are interested in being a part of this initial introductory beta group, I'm calling it a beta group, but we've already got a very strong foundation, then here's the deal. There's two parts to this. It's specifically for men who want to live a life of abundance and prosperity in family, faith, finances, and fitness. But there's also a business side to it, completely separate, and there'll be two different price points. The members group alone is going to start out at $37 a month. And I'm telling you, that is chump change compared to the value that you're going to get out of this experience. The other part of it is my e-learning business platform where there are literally millions of dollars of done-for-you marketing business strategies for many different industries from doctors, attorneys, dentists, plumbers, dog walkers. I mean, you name it. It's all there. That alone is $97. And I've already got people in that group in on that e-learning platform. But the thing about the e-learning platform is there's no way to communicate and have conversations in there. So I'm combining the two with the member site. Those that get into this initial beta group, and it's only going to be 20 men getting started in the first couple months, is going to be $37 and you get access to both platforms. You get access to the member site with everything that's in there, and it is going to grow, and you get access to the e-learning platform. So as long as you're a member, you will continue just paying $37 a month for both the member site, which is going to grow tremendously, and so many men are going to grow from this. Families are going to be greatly enhanced, and the community is going to be greatly enhanced. That's my big picture for this whole thing. It's not just enhancing men's lives. The values and skills that you are going to enhance in your life is going to blast out 
into the community and that is going to make all the difference because eventually we are also going to have live meetup groups and other live events that's my vision for this as it goes as it rolls out so you will pay just thirty seven dollars a month for both the membership site and the e-learning platform as long as you're a member that price will never change for these first twenty men and i assure you the price is going to go up for the member site and the e-learning platform in the next couple of months as we add more value and more men into the group because my time is very valuable my time is very precious I enjoy the lifestyle that I live as soon as I'm done recording this I'm gonna pack up and me and the family are going to Disney World yes I admit I'm a little bit of a Disney freak and we go there darn near every single weekend to one of the parks and sometimes just hang out sometimes we don't even ride the rides we just like going there and hanging out my wife and I like watching the shows and all that stuff and I like to be able to travel and go visit my son in Georgia or go like this last week, just pack up on a Wednesday and fly out to Newark to hang out with Tony Robbins and some other veterans. And let's see, Melanie Griffith was there and Sean White was there and we're down on the floor and mingling and networking with everybody. This is my lifestyle. And I want this for you as well. I want you to be able to enjoy life, still make an amazing income from your, from your job or from your business, whatever it is that you do, and have a blast with your family and just have an amazing lifestyle. That's what I want for you guys. And that's what we're going to be building. And that's what we're going to be doing within the Abundance and Prosperity Mastery Group. So when you're ready to become a member of the Abundance and Prosperity Mastery Group, get in contact with me. Send me an email to wally at menofabundance.com. And in the subject, put something about AP Mastery. And then I'll get in contact with you. We'll set up a, a time so that you and I can get on a Zoom call. And we're going to meet face-to-face -face because I'm interviewing every single one of the first 20 men that I put into this group. And by the way, part of the group as well, what we are going to be doing is once a week, we are going to be meeting on a live Zoom call. And if you can't make the live Zoom call, no problem. Then I'll record it and you'll be able to communicate later within the group. I'm super excited about what this is going to do for families, and I really look forward to having a conversation with you and inviting you into the Abundance and Prosperity Mastery Group. So our featured guest today is Matt Morris. Matt is a best-selling author, speaker, and life coach. He has gained wisdom from the traumatic events that have happened in his life. Today, he lives to inspire and make a positive impact on the lives of others. Throughout his books, he goes into detail about how things such as losing both of his parents at a very young age, surviving a plane crash, as well as facing major disabilities are horrific, but have also made him a stronger, more compassionate, and empathetic person. Matt's main focus is to help people enjoy the present moment, overcome depression, stop suicide, all of which are challenges he spent years dealing with. He is on a mission to change the negative stigma towards talking about depression in order to make it a better place. Men of Abundance, it is my honor to introduce you to Matt Morris. Matt, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. How you doing? Good, man. Thank you so much for having me on here. Brother, it's my pleasure. Where are you at in the world? I'm in San Diego, California. San Diego. I dig San Diego, man. Yeah. It's a nice town. You know, we were talking pre-show about me being in Hawaii, and I thought Hawaii was expensive. And then I go to San Diego and start linking up with some partners there, and they're like, nah, brother. It's only uh, difference is, is we're on the mainland. It's just as expensive. And then don't even get me started on San Francisco. It's just ridiculous out there. Uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. I used to live in San Francisco, too. Oh, wow. But I'm like, I, yeah, but I moved down to San Diego much better. Better prices and, and I love the weather. You can't beat the weather. No, you can't. And and you know what though? There are so many entrepreneurs and so many podcasters and and just people in my circles moving to San Diego. Uh, and there's a lot of just a lot of buzz. It's just an exciting place to be. At any point, man, I, I like to start out with the show with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today? Oh, I love I, I love that you started out with that. That's so awesome. I love gratitudes. Gratitudes are the best way to start out every day, really. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just grateful to be here, grateful to be alive, grateful to be alive and breathing and healthy and, um, you know, really looking forward to the show as well. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> it's the simple <laughs> things, you know, it's, it's like you're saying, I start out every single morning. So do you do that as well? Do you start out every day with an attitude of gratitude or, or being grateful for I something do. in some way? I do. I, I'm always grateful for three things every day. How does that look for you? Just right when I wake up, you know, I just, I just, I, I lean over, kiss my wife. And then I, I just think of three things I'm really grateful for. And, um, I just really try to feel 
the gratitude. Like I, I, feel, I, I, I also sometimes I'll imagine what it's like to not have those things that I'm really grateful for. Mm-hmm. Then feel how it would feel to not have those things. Yeah. And then I feel even more grateful. Yeah. I love the I love the fact that you said feel because I get to the point to where I'm laying in bed and that's when I do it too. I, as soon as my eyes open up, it's not even a habit anymore. It's just who I am. I literally lay there and I start thinking of things until I just have this huge smile on my face. And I feel the endorphins. I feel the, you know, just everything just waking me up. It's like my my morning coffee. Although I do still yes. have my morning coffee. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> yes, yeah. I have my espressos as well. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. So how would you describe yourself? I would describe myself, well, let's see. I'm, uh, I've been through a lot of trauma in my life, um, you know, and then I've, I've learned how to overcome it through, basically through the trial and error, a lot of trial and error. Um, can I tell a little bit about my story? Yeah, cool. go into okay. it, bro. So, so, yeah, so basically what happened was um, I – was in a plane crash when I was 10 years old. My dad, um, but to back it up a little bit, my dad and mom were both attorneys and they did really well for themselves. Um, I was a pretty normal kid, played sports, had friends, uh, lived a pretty good life. And um, just on this one ski vacation that we took on my, uh, with my family on my dad's private plane, um, the plane took off and it got up to about 8,000 feet. And then something went wrong. We don't know where, what went wrong, but something went wrong, and it crashed and hit the ground. Um, and then I went into a coma for one month. So I had to relearn everything, how to walk, how to talk, uh, really literally everything for a good three to three to six months. I was in and out of the hospital. Um, for, sorry, for six months I was in and out of the hospital. And uh, through the, in the plane crash, my mom... She didn't make it. She actually ended up freezing to death because it was cold outside. So we were trapped in the plane for 11 hours. Um, and my dad, he suffered from a traumatic brain injury. He had, uh, he was never the same afterwards. And then after that, I went to high school. I went to school and everything like that. Um, I ended up having some back problems from a plane crash. So I walked with a limp. And... Um, it was really, it was hard for me to walk for a good three years. And it was, I got, consequently, I got bullied in high school mm-hmm. and things like that. So that was another tough thing. And then I just got into the state of mind. Oh, I was just like, man, life sucks. There's no point in being here. Like, like I just feel like, man, I, I could just, you know, there's no point in living. I was at this low point. And then I began to... Um, I began to, I, I heard this band on the radio. I was like, cause I, I really felt disconnected from everybody, everything. Like nobody would ever, ever understand like what I was going through. Nobody could, I just felt so alone, you know? And then I got into the state of depression. I was really depressed for a, for a long while. And, but like I said, I heard this band on the radio, um, with a song, one step closer to the edge and I'm about to break. Like that's how I felt. The band was called Lincoln Park. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just thought, I was like, whoa, these guys are like feeling what I'm feeling, like know what I'm going through. This band was made for me. That's what I thought when I was 17 or 18 years old. And I was like, wow, okay, okay, these guys. So I, so I, so I basically bought their album, I listened to it, and I was like, wow, every single song in there is talking to me. Like, I get it. Every <laughs> single song. I put the album on repeat, repeat, repeat. And, and it was like my music therapy. So I began to finally feel like, okay, when I was angry, I would listen to the music. When I was feeling stressed or anxious, I would listen to the music and I would feel better. But at this point, still I had those back problems and my back was really uh, and not in a good position because I was walking with a, walking with a limp still. And um, I decided to actually be proactive from reading a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens that my grandma bought me randomly. So I started reading it and it talks about being proactive and you have to live the, you have to, you, all your choices are basically uh, how you make your life. You create your life off of the choices you make. So I was like, all right, um, you know, I'm going to choose to be, choose to try to fix my back. I'm going to talk to people and see if they know how to get my, how to fix my back. So 
I've started to talk to personal trainers, um, people I'd meet on the internet, all types of different sort, all types of different things. And I, I was really proactive, and I, I, um, I began to do squats and lunges, and I did some planks as well. And my back got better. I, I could finally walk without a woo. I could finally walk straight again. It was a miracle. <laughs> and um, so, so years went by. I went to college, and everything was okay. You know, I was. I began to finally get out of the state of depression and actually live my life, and begin to do better. And um, my dad was still, like I said, never the same. So he ended up dying of a drug overdose. So that was really hard on me as well. And that was right after college. Um, so basically I was alone, and I felt alone in this life again. And then I went to another state of depression. And I was like, man, life is so hard. You know, I got nobody here but myself. Um, but you know what? I, I, I got I to gotta learn how to do it. So... Then I went to, uh, I, I heard about the present moment. So I began, this, this was where my life began to really change. I, I was like, because I was stuck in the past. I was like, why did all this have to happen? Why did my dad have to die? Why did my mom have to die? Why did I have to have permanent disabilities? Why does all this have to happen? You know what I mean? So, so then I'm, I hear about the present moment. I'm just like, I want to live in the present moment. I want to be in the present moment because that's where... Pain does not live. That's where fear does not live. That's where anxiety does not exist. So how can I stay in the present moment? So I began to read a lot of books, began to do meditation, experiment really with meditation, began to experiment with yoga, um, just breath work, focusing on my breath and realizing like, okay, I'm breathing. The one thing I truly have control over is, is and being conscious over is my breath. If I'm stressed out, I'm going to focus on breathing. I'm going to I'm going to take myself out of the situation, if possible, and then focus on my breath and get recentered, get regrounded. So I began to do that, and slowly my life began to change. And then, on top of that, I began setting goals. At this point, I was uh, taking back. I I was probably like 26 at this time, 26 years old. Um. And at this point, I, like I said, I also began to set goals, began to visualize, learn about uh, law of attraction and things that and actually how your thoughts become things, how, you're, how powerful your thoughts can actually be. You know, if, you're, if you have all these negative self-talk, which is like, you're not good enough, you know, you suck, you know, don't even try. Like, these were the things that I used to tell myself, but I changed those things. You know, it's kind of like, you know, why not change those negative thoughts into something positive? Mm -hmm. You are good enough. You can do that. You can do anything you put your mind to. Like anything like, like just whenever you have a negative thought, I just, I would shift it to a positive thought. Like you can do this because law of attraction, because what you think about becomes your reality, you know? So, so basically, this went on, um, and I began to get more in the present moment, which was amazing. And then, this was for about five years. I was really I became really good at this. I wrote a I wrote a book on it called How to Live in the Present Moment, uh, just because it totally changed changed my life. Like, let go of the past and stop worrying about the future. Mm -hmm. That's that's the title of my book. And I was like, man, because I was thinking to myself, I'm like, how the, how much this changed my life and made me feel happy again. Like, out of uh, despite all this tragedy that's happened like i'm able to be happy and, and how many other people can can benefit from this by reading my book or listening to my audiobook i'm just like man i want to help out so many people because i know i'm not the only one who's going through this you know yeah absolutely so, i've i've talked to so many guys over the years either for the show or otherwise and women for that matter that just have not exactly the same. I've only talked to one other guy who survived a, uh, a plane crash, and that is wow. uh, Dave Sanderson. He was the last mm. passenger to get off the plane that landed in the Hudson. Oh, my God. You remember that? Yes, yeah, so he was the last passenger. I do. He, he purposely was the last passenger, and then, of course, the pilot came off af after him. But, right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Incredible. not the same exact experiences, but so many people are going through this stuff in your book right. and what you're saying. And, guys, I will tell you right now that you are living the life that you set your mind to. The problem is, 
is probably not the life you want because that's where you have your mindset. And you have to do like Matt's talking about and take five years or however long it takes to start watching videos, reading books, listening to audio, Mm -hmm. getting around the right people like Matt and reprogramming your mind. Exactly. Put it where you want to go. Totally. Totally. And you're right. You know, you have to reprogram your mind. And that's, that's, that's like moving forward. Like that's kind of what I did like last summer because I reprogrammed my mind. I, um, Last summer, I got into another state of depression because uh, we're going back. Remember the band, uh, the band Lincoln Park, that mm-hmm. saved my life, who I really connected to when I was 18 years old. Um, that lead singer ended up taking his life, mm-hmm. committed suicide, Chester Bennington, and I got really down and depressed about that because uh, I had this state of mind. I was always like, "Well, if he can do it, I can do it." You know what I mean? Like this guy can survive depression and, and suicidal thoughts and all these this mental illness issues, mental health, um, I can do it too. But then he goes off and takes his own life because he's so depressed and gets so down about whatever is going on in his personal life because he feels so disconnected from, from the other humans, um, which, is, which is one of the most tragic things is because how disconnected we are, even though we want to be so much more connected mm-hmm. um, with, all, with the internet and with the social media, we, we feel like we want to be more connected. But a lot of times where we're less connected because we need more human connection. We need more physical touch. Right. We need more um, just like understanding of one another, like like empathizing, compassion, things like that is what we need in this world. Mm-hmm. And, and things like your podcast right here is a great way for men to connect. Like, amazing way. I'm so grateful for this, that, that you're bringing this podcast. But like I'm saying, just like, so many people feel alone. Like, look at the suicidal numbers because 123 people in the U.S. take their lives each day by suicide. Right. Those numbers are staggering. That's re- that's insane. That's like more than car accidents and you know homicides combined. But suicides are so so abundant because um so so there's so many because people feel alone. They need help. They need connection. They need mm-hmm. human connection. And that's why I realized like. That's why I got to the point of state of mind where I had, where I needed to be vulnerable, and I needed to share my story with the world because basically I was hiding my story for many many years because I didn't want anybody to know that I was in a plane crash or that I had disabilities because I didn't want to be looked down upon, you know. And and but then I realized like you know what by me hiding my story, I'm I'm hiding connection. From, I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing a disservice to the world because other people can connect with my story. Other people can see courage in me sharing my story about vulnerability and just being yourself, being your authentic self. Like that's all you are. I mean, that's who you are and why not be the best version of yourself? So I took that state of mind and I was like, you know, okay. So after doing about six months of research, I wrote another book. Um, and it's called Unzip Your Mind. So how to be vulnerable in a conscious world. So basically, like, it's about being vulnerable and sharing your story and why it's so important to do that in today's world. Um, and I released that about a month ago. But I, and since then, I've been doing, like, uh, I've been, my social media influence has been growing a lot because I've been doing videos and things like that, just sharing my story sharing who I am and how I can help people. And, and how has what, that been working out? How many, um, what good news stories do you have for us that um, by sharing your story, because what you've basically done, I've heard this phrase many years ago, is turn your mess, in, turn your mess into a message. Hmm. Because we have what's referred to as the curse of knowledge. We being those of us who have these issues and these things that we're keeping deep, dark secrets type of things. Um, which are, and it's therapeutic to be able to have these conversations and to help somebody else. So what are some good news stories that are coming out of what you've been doing, both from your website, from your books and anything else you've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. You know, what's been happening is by, for instance, by me sharing my story, I, I've gotten a lot of Facebook messages and Instagram messages about, Oh, thank you so much for sharing your story. It really it helped me out, helped me out. And, um, I got also get stories. I get messages that are like, "Oh, I've been so depressed, you know, because 
I mean, the reality is one out of every 10 Americans are depressed or suffering from state of a state of depression, which is mm-hmm. so horrendous. But just the, the fact that I'm able to connect with people and, and, and realize like, Hey guys, you're not alone. You're not alone in this world. You know, we're all in this together. We're all in this crazy life filled with ups and downs and ups and downs. It's a roller coaster of life mm-hmm. together. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and it is changing together. a lot. It is changing. Yeah. You know, just this morning, I wrote some notes down here because when I'm doing my, during my idle time, when I'm not doing a whole lot, which is rare, but I do take some time out of the day where I just sit, you know, and I just think quietly, there's nothing going on. But there are times that I like to watch uh, musically. Well, now it's called TikTok, I guess. I don't know. But they have these videos and they have these skits and stuff like that. And some of these kids and some of these people, not just kids, some of these people, they put a lot of time and effort into some of these videos where they're lip syncing some sounds or whatever. And some of them are super creative and I love the creativity of it all. But every once in a while, more often than not, because I got off musically for a good six months, didn't do anything. Now I'm back on over the last couple of weeks or so. And I'm seeing more and more videos of people that are saying, hey, I put up this video and it got reported and because of this and because my baby was running across in the background with it with her shirt off, you know, or something like that, or or maybe I said something. The bottom line is this, I bring that up because so many people are getting so butthurt about how many people and literally somebody said, Well, you all liked this video, but you don't like this video and you know, I got ten likes on this one and eighty likes on this one. I'm like, oh my goodness, these people are so dependent on these clicks and these likes and somebody liking them on a on a platform that they probably will never meet in their lives mm-hmm. some people are just playing around and having fun but some people are taking yeah. this stuff very seriously and there's a lot of bullying going on on there they'll talk about people talking and, and what i see them focusing on this is the other point i wanted to make is they're getting good reviews they're getting good comments but there's those two or three harsh comments about something that's completely like your eyebrows are crooked or you know some craziness they they dwell on that and i see it in their face and i see it in their voice and i see their their message back like you didn't have to say that that was just hurtful i'm like why are you worried about those two or three when you got 20 that are saying you're freaking awesome yeah that's it's hard it's 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 weird that we're i mean as Oftentimes, like even as human beings, naturally we're designed to, like focus on, on what's wrong instead of what's right to, to kind of re- kind of fix whatever's mm-hmm. wrong. To, I mean, it's, it's basically feedback is what it is. It's feedback, but a lot of times it's all lies. It's not even true. Absolutely. You know? um, just to bring other people down because a lot of people feel better about themselves because they're so insecure mm-hmm. by bringing other people down. They feel better, you know, which is Absolutely. which. Is, too bad it's unfortunate but that's the way the world is it is it's also the way the world like um those good news stories good feeling uh ads don't work nearly as well they work they get my eyes cheered up a little bit but those good feeling ads don't work nearly as well for the masses as the controversial ads take Mm -hmm. nike for instance recently they knew that was controversy they knew that was going to happen you can't tell me they didn't but they knew, and that's why, and that's just human nature. Unfortunately, people yep. thrive, many people thrive on the controversy as opposed to the good feelings. Totally uh, stuff. So because because I mean, you, you you take just an example, like like take an example of 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 how a bad news story makes you feel compared to a good news story. You know, mm-hmm. like normally, like the good news story feels light and and and, and light and and a little bit of emotion, but the bad news story feels heavy. And it feels mm-hmm. like you can really feel the emotion. You're not going to forget the bad emotion story. Right. But you'll forget the good, light, easy, good emotion story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, yeah. and that's, that's, that's too bad it's like that. But, but it is. But then that's when you have to go. You have to, you have to um, I don't know, you have to do some work, personal development work on yourself and realize, hey, you know, okay, I did get 10 really good comments about people who loved it, but I got the one bad comment. You know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna take these ten good comments. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste them into a file in my folder, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna remind myself of these good comments every single morning. And yeah. I'm gonna re- remind myself of all these good things that the people that are benefiting from my stuff, instead of focusing on the people who are hating my stuff, the people who are tearing my stuff apart. I'm not even gonna to listen to. I'm not gonna. I might listen to them one point because maybe they have some good advice or good. Sometimes feedback. they I, do. Yeah. I can fix my eyebrow. You know. Okay, I'll trim my eyebrow a little or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
But I mean, the, really, the important thing is to, to focus on the good you're doing in the world because that's what feels good. You're not gonna, yeah. you know, you're not. Don't focus on people that are bringing you down and making you feel like crap. You yeah. know, it always happens, man. And and just you know, guys, as you as you're listening to us and you're thinking about this and you think of you, if if some of this stuff makes you fearful for putting yourself out there and telling your story and turning your mess into a message, just understand this. You're always going to resonate with somebody and you're going to piss off others. It's just always going to happen. And the fact of the matter is if you're not pissing off others then you're trying to appease the whole, you know, everybody. And at that point you're not pleasing anybody quite yeah. frankly. So I've got haters. I have conversations with some of them if I have the time, but most of the time the haters are just jealous or they're insecure in their own selves and they need some they need help too. They need to yeah. have that conversation. They need that interaction and they're actually asking for it in my opinion and in my yeah. experience quite frankly. Like I just read, I don't know if you know who Caleb Maddox is. He's this 14-year-old who made $100,000 by the time he was 14 and mm. and now he's I think he's about 16 or so right now and he you know he's been in force. He's done all kinds of amazing stuff and somebody had he he mentions during one of his speeches you know, somebody told me that the only reason why I'm where I'm at today is because of my dad. And he said, well, <laughs> because his dad is doing well in business and so on and so forth. And he said, you know, I really don't know how to respond to that because the fact of the matter is it's true. My dad is exactly why I am who I am today. So thank you for that. And he was 14 when he said that. I mean, just, the, you know, because the kid reads a lot. And he watches a lot of videos and he hangs out with Tony Robbins and he hangs out with Grant Cardone and all of these guys and all of these guys that I'm referencing and, and so many other people that I have a conversation with, they've completely cut out the news medias and all this kind of stuff out of their life because they realize it's so toxic and totally. they just want to put their stuff out there. So don't yeah. be afraid of that, guys. And, and I totally agree with that. You know, I haven't listened to the news in a long time. The only time I've seen the news is when, when I, maybe when I was in the gym or the other time I saw the news was in the airport mm -hmm. uh, when, when I was just sitting there. But other than that, I haven't listened to the news in a good five, six years because I know it brings me down. It makes me focus on all the negative stuff that is happening in the world, even though that's like the point zero 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 one percent of the population in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, like the most of the world, I've traveled all over the world. I've been to like over 30 countries and I've realized that I love learning about cultures, but most importantly, most people in the world are good. Like there's that small percentage of people that are, do me that will do harm, but that's so small. Like most people are out to help you. Like even that is if they absolutely have the same true. Language, yeah. yeah. I mean, like last last week I was in Japan, and they they don't really speak English there. Mm -hmm. So so, but I got lost a few times, and I was like, hey, can you can can you help me? They did whatever they could to try to help me and get me to my destination. I'm just like, wow, I love that. That's amazing. They're so, you know, kind and so peaceful and so happy and, and, and so like helpful. Yeah, that's totally my experience. I've been to 23 countries on five continents, and Japan's one yeah. of them. I've been to Japan several times. I love Japan, and mm -hmm. the news, well, and and just the general media, um, regardless of what network you listen to or whatever, they will have you believe that. We are living in a very, very dangerous world. And there are dangers out oh, there. But we are right. living in a safer time today than we ever have in the history of this planet. Period. And if you don't believe that, then get out and travel and meet the people that the news media and everybody's trying to tell you are the worst people in the world. Don't oh. go there. I got a friend of mine who was born in Haiti. Oh. And... He ended up growing up here in Miami, a couple of the states, but he spent most of his time in Miami. And now he's retired with his family at a very young age, I might add, because he got into the cell phone industry many years ago and AT&T kind of, you know, partnered with him. And now he lives in uh, Medellin, I think it's, I'm pronouncing that right, Medellin, Colombia, like where the drug lords are at and people get killed every single day. And, and he said, I went there to visit reluctantly and mm. now... He moved his family there, and he absolutely loves it. He says just, he's, he feels safer uh, there than he does in Miami, which I can believe. <laughs> that's that's so that's that's so funny. I've been I've been hearing so much about Colombia the past you know a couple months because me and my wife are considering taking a trip down to Colombia. But of course, everybody says like, oh, don't go to Colombia. That's that's the most dangerous one of the most dangerous places in the world. And I was like, I was talking. I decided to message a few people on Facebook, like because it's so easy to connect with people. 
I messaged some some guys from Colombia. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of traveling out to Colombia, but I hear it's really dangerous. You know, what do you what do you recommend or what do you suggest? He's like, one of the guys was like, no, nah, man, I, I despise when people ask that question because it's that's not even the truth. The truth is that Colombia is so safe. It's so beautiful. But so many people hate on Colombia because they're just afraid of what they hear in the news. Well, it's not it's even the news. It's all the movies. Yeah. Every every drug lord comes from Colombia. I mean, every single one of them. They all come from Colombia, which we know is not the truth, you know. I mean, but I mean, there are some drug lords in Colombia. There's no doubt about that. We we know sure. that for sure. But there's <laughs> some heinous but people <laughs> right down the street from me, right here in in Tampa. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's just if you don't, if you're not in that game, then you ain't going to be messing with them guys, most likely. Yeah, and it's and it's the reality is that that's most likely nothing's going to happen. But of course, you have that little fear. Mm-hmm. You know, from the movies you've watched or whatever. Yeah. Taken and no. stuff. I'm not telling you guys to be to, to just go out on a whim and not be cautious. I mean, you should always do that. That's always been the case. But just travel. It's not as bad Definitely. as people think it is. Man. Yeah, be just just basically be mindful. You know, mm-hmm. of course, use yeah, think ahead and just be like, okay, I'm I know this is like a, a, a may not be the safest area, so I'm not going to go out at nighttime. I'm going to stay inside at nighttime, but I'm going to I'm going to be free in the daytime. We're going to travel in the daytime, you know, wherever I want to go in the daytime when there's light out and there's people around, I'm safe. Yeah. But if it's dark and you're alone, you know, it could be questionable. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I like like I said, I even lived in Hawaii for ten years, and there's places in Hawaii where I wouldn't go during the day. I mean, there, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. I cannot go back being the color that I am. I cannot go back into that neighborhood that I grew up in if unless I have somebody with me who knows me and is going to walk with me because it's it's a rough neighborhood, just yeah. bottom line. It's a rough neighborhood, and uh, it's gotten rougher over the years, But and it was rough back then when I was growing up. You know, so, yeah, I mean, we have the troubles right in our backyard. Just get out and travel. That's all we're trying to say. Right. So, brother, we're at the point where we're going to pay it forward. You ready to do that? Totally. Let's do it. Outstanding. So share with our abundant leaders one to three actionable steps that they can take today. All right. One thing. Okay. First off, like we started the call, I, I just want to say every every day, think of something you're grateful for, even if it's the most basic thing that you take for granted, like the ability to walk, the ability to talk. And I lost all these things in the plane crash. I had to relearn all this stuff. So, so it's easier for me to know how it is to not be able to talk and not be able to walk and not be able to even hold a fork to, to feed yourself. So remember to be grateful every single morning, every single day for what you have and, and, and do your best to feel how it feels to have those things and to even not have those things, feel how it feels. So gratitude, that's one. Um, number two is, is, is hydrate yourself. Remember, like for instance, of me, I get headaches and I know a lot of people in, in the States get a lot of headaches and a lot of times that comes from because you're not giving yourself enough water. You're not hydrating yourself. You're not giving yourself enough, um, basically H2O to, to, uh, hydrate your body and keep yourself healthy. So drink a lot of water all throughout the day. That's another thing. I know it's very basic, but it's very important. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of water. Um, and three, one other thing I want to just, just say is, is there's a, a bunch of things I could say, but the third one I want to say is just, just we can have a goal. Like most people have things that they want in life. So take one thing you want in your life and take a few seconds every morning to visualize yourself having that goal already, already achieving that goal and the process of what you have to do to get to that goal. Just imagine yourself there. Imagine yourself there in the process and then imagine yourself having achieved the goal already. That'll bring, that'll like basically trick your mind. It'll, it'll, it'll program your mind into believing that you have it and, and it'll constantly remind yourself to keep striving for that goal as opposed to falling off the wagon, which a lot of people do, including myself. Um, I've done that. Like I forget about my goal, but then I come back to it. But if you visualize yourself every morning doing it, you won't forget it and you'll actually achieve it much faster. Studies have been shown. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like you said, the water is basic, but men, there's so it's, it's the wonder drug. <laughs> that and yeah. one other thing that you mentioned earlier was breathing. Few people 
And I do the same thing. I, I do the purposeful breathing. Few people take breathing seriously. I mean, it's a passive thing that our body does. But it's so important to sit back and take those deep breaths and sit up straight and get those good, clean breaths coming in and out of your body on purpose. It just makes a huge difference in your mind, gets the oxygen flowing, your body feels energized, and then drinking all that water is just so many benefits. We can't even, that's a whole, that's two, three more shows, uh, conversations. Totally, Totally, yeah, just remember to breathe, remember to breathe. Take a deep breath in through your nose and and make your belly expand as the best that you can, and then breathe out. Mm -hmm. Do that five times. That's all I have to do. It takes one minute. Yep, every morning. It's a beautiful thing, man. So you already mentioned quite a few habits, but what are the daily habits make the biggest impact in your life? Yeah, yeah, the habits. Well, I do my morning ritual. My morning ritual basically consists of of, uh, just smiling. First thing I wake up in the morning, I kiss my wife, like I said before, and then I smile, and then I do my gratitudes. I -hmm. smile because I'm grateful to be alive. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and and then I drink a glass of water because I keep it right by my bed. Drink a full glass of water, and then I, I do a short meditation for about ten minutes, just to kind of center myself. Just so I listen to a guided meditation on an app called Insight Insight mm-hmm. Timer. Really good app. Got some really good guided meditations on there. And then after that, after ten minutes, I I I, I have a little trampoline that I jump on for about one minute to get my blood flowing. Um. And then what I do is I stretch. I stretch for about two minutes uh, just to kind of get my back because my back's been so tight and my legs been so tight, mm-hmm. just staying with in the same position, sleeping for so long. And then, I, then my last but not least, I jump into the shower. And then for the last 30 seconds to a minute, I have a cold, freezing cold shower to wake me up and get my blood flowing again. And then I'm off to a great day. Damn, dude. <laughs> that sounds so freaking familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you you almost basically just said my whole routine, you know, minus a few things. I, I drink the lemon water with a little bit of Himalayan uh, pink salt in it. But yeah. I, like a, I like a steaming hot shower after my workout. And uh, I just went for a brisk walk this morning because somebody was on the elliptical down at our fitness center here in our community. They were all fooled up. And usually there's nobody in there. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? I'm usually the only one in here at this time after I dropped my kid off at school. And then um, I was like, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just went for a long walk and just walked yes. it out, man. Listen to a podcast on the way, you know. But but at the last the last couple like the last minute or two of my hot steaming hot shower is just as cold as I can get it. Which the water doesn't get too cold here in Florida this time of year, so we'll see uh, if yeah. I can get that water colder. But anyhow, what would you recommend? You've mentioned quite a few books. You read quite a bit. You've got your two books, where we're definitely going to have listed in the show notes as well. But um, what are you reading or listening to, or what you, what would you recommend that our abundant leaders read or listen to, and why? Yeah, you know, a really good book that I that I just actually learned about six months ago or so is called A New Earth. Um, it's by Eckhart Tolle. It's a really really incredible book. So, um, it's it's basically about consciousness and being really aware of everything that is going on. You know, because a lot of times people go throughout their day without even being aware, without even, without even thinking about like what's really going on around them and being aware mm. of the present moment. You know, the actual things that are happening. They just walk through life like no big deal. But the, it's important to be actually conscious and aware of what is really happening. What is really happening um, is the, and asking yourself, is this my ego talking? Or is this me, my core self, talking? What am I? What am I get? What do I want this for? Do I really want to do this? You know, questions that you can ask yourself that will bring you closer to your life purpose, essentially, mm-hmm. because that's why we're all here is to, to serve a purpose. Right. But like I said, A New Earth is a really incredible book. I highly recommend it to anybody. It'll, it will change your life. Um, it might be a little heavy at first, but then after the first couple chapters, there's really, really incredible information inside there. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. I'll have that linked up there in the show notes as well. Totally. So what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? I think it's it's fear. Fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, most people, I think, are afraid to step out of their comfort zone and just try something new. Be vulnerable. You know, without knowing the outcome. You know, you might get, you know, because everybody has fears. Every, every single person in this world has fear. The fear of rejection. Fear that you're not going to be liked. Fear that people are going to hate on you. You know, but but you know what? Everybody's got that. You're not alone. It's like 
no matter what that's going to happen. And like you said earlier, you know, if, if you're going to have haters and if you aren't hated, you know, if, if everybody likes you, then, then nobody likes you, essentially. You know, because you want to be known for, for, for who you are and what you're doing and, and really be a good example of this world. And, and not everybody's going to like you, and that's just the way it is. So, yeah. So yeah. like I said, just step out of your comfort zone and just try something new. Yeah, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And, you know, to clarify that a little bit about people not liking you or liking you, you know, I mean, you can be doing the most amazing things in life. And people might like what you're doing and what you stand for, just maybe not the way you do it. And like I said earlier, sometimes guys, people just get jealous and they're just like, why the I'm the same way. Why is that guy getting so much totally. attention on himself and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it just, totally. you just got to brush that stuff <laughs> off and let it go, man, because it's always going to be that way. Yep. Unfortunately, <laughs> because and the yeah. fact of the matter is because you're going after it and they're not, <laughs> that's the bottom right. line. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're actually doing it. You're actually doing something like that's so, mm -hmm. such a big step right there. You're actually taking the steps to actually do something for this world or do something that you want to achieve in this lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Matt? It means really just uh, fulfilling your purpose, uh, living your life. Um, it's not financially. I mean, I, finances are it's amazing to have a, a, a make a lot of money because you can live, you can travel more. And that's why I like to make a lot of money. But at the same time, that's really not what life is about. Life is about serving a purpose, helping other people. Um, if I feel like I'm helping other people and making a difference in this world, I feel abundant. It doesn't matter if, how much money I have. I feel abundant when I'm helping other people, help making this world a better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. You know, success is great. And for me, the short definition of success is basically what you've done for yourself and maybe your immediate family. That's awesome. Hey, more yeah. proud, that's, that's absolutely amazing because mm -hmm. few people get to that point to where they truly believe that's the case. Now, if you want abundance, that's when you start creating a legacy. That's when you start reaching out and helping other people reach the levels of success that they want or even just get a meal for that day or – they fell right. down, help them pick, you know, they dropped their wallet, pick yeah. it up and hand it to them. That feeling yes. right there, just thinking about doing that for somebody just makes me feel amazing. And that's when you start transitioning from success to abundance. And some people refer to it as significance, being significant to the world and other people in your community. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Love it. So we're going to close this up, brother. But before we do, what did we not talk about that you want to ensure our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? Yeah, I, I would just this. I want to connect with you guys. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, you can find me on my website, mattgmorris.com. Um, and I would, you know, you can message me on there or you can just message them at mattgmorriscoaching at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you guys. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have that linked up in the show notes, guys. So don't have to worry about writing that down. Um, man, I strongly encourage you to get a hold of Matt because. You know, he's gone through a lot of crap in his life and it it's brought him down, it's taken him down and, and it's it's taken out family members, quite frankly. And um, you know, he can relate to what you're going through. We've all been through our own experiences, but as soon as you can sit down with somebody who's who's feeling the same way you you know, they get it then it's easier to talk to somebody like that. It is for me anyway. So I encourage yes. you to reach out to Matt uh, if you feel the need to do so, because Lord knows you have a lot to offer to this world. Yes. So much to offer. And if anything, go, go walk to your living room, go walk to wherever your spouse and your children are at and look them in the eye and just, just watch them. Just look at them. That's your purpose right there. That's your number one purpose right there. If yeah. it, and if you don't have a family, then your siblings or, or somebody that, that cares for you. That's your purpose. At yeah. least hold on to that and get to talk. Go talk to somebody. Go talk to them. Go look at the person in the eye and tell them you love them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, it's beautiful. Absolutely wonderful conversation, man. I love it. I love you. I really do. You're a wonderful you too, man. And I, and I love, love what you got going on. Go out and live your life of abundance and just keep paying it forward, man, because it's making a huge difference in the world. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. So your action step today is one of two. Either you're personally dealing with issues that you have not had a conversation with somebody about. Rather, you need to have a conversation with a professional and or you need to have a conversation with somebody who knows you very well, who you trust, 
and who you know will guide you in the right direction. Now again, you may need professional help. And I'm telling you right now, it is not a weakness to ask for help. It is a strength. It is a strong man who is willing to ask and seek out help. Now, if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you know that you don't have any issues that you're dealing with that are debilitating that may lead to suicide or deep depression, then look for the guys in your circles that you know have been through some shit lately or in the past. They're dealing with that stuff. If you know for a fact that they're not seeking some sort of help, and most do, but they do it in private, respect that. But also be there for them. Be there when they're ready to talk. Ask the questions. Bring it up sometimes. It's not a bad thing because sometimes guys are wanting to talk about these things, but they just don't know how to start the conversation. Be the man to start that conversation. And if you need some help with that, then go back to episode 229 where I had a conversation with Sarah Beckman. And she has a book specifically talking about how to talk with neighbors during a hard time, how to talk with your friends and family during their hard times. I think that would be very helpful for you to go listen to, especially if you don't know how to start that conversation. Now, go out and live your life of abundance. And guys, make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.